Okay, so thank you for having me here this, this year again. Last year I've been uh, speaking about uh, our about to be released Open Solaris 2008. We released it uh, last April and the important thing here was that it was the first time we had a fully redistributable Solaris which was very modular and based on an IPS called a packaging repository which is sitting on the web very similar to the technology you were getting with Debian. This was a kind of a precondition to do uh, the things uh, you want to do with, uh, uh, with uh, Project Kaiman because we needed a modular operating system which you can install easily in the pieces you need. Uh. With this precondition, uh, we could release, uh, the, we could ignite the second stage uh, in uh, last November by uh, shipping Solaris, uh, Open Solaris 2811, including a distro constructor. This distro constructor allows you to build a fairly simple uh, and easy uh, custom distribution, like either tier on a one gigabyte USB stick, where I simply uh, configured uh, some stuff which gives you an Open Solaris with an M stack on top, and then, for example, Drupal, with whom I worked two weeks ago because Tuple is a kind of a wonderful content management system they are here, and the beauty of it, installation is extremely simple, and the download is just a megabyte, which made it an, an idea or a pet project for me to test Project Kaima. So uh, uh, what, what I did in order to get a full stack with AMP, MySQL, and uh, Tuple is the stuff I'm going to show you here. So what you basically need is uh, the stuff from Project Kaiman. It's under a, CDL, under a CCDL license uh, from Sun. This is the home page of the uh, project. And uh, we released the project in its first revision uh, last November. And a requirement to use the constructor is uh, our November release from OpenSolaris. What you're basically getting is a simple command line tool, which is fairly robust, which works with a manifest file where you put your information in, and then you can do all the modifications for your own distribution as you like. You can uh, define the uh, packages you want to have in your distribution. You can uh, add additional packages. You can teach it to use stuff from uh, other places, like I've been doing it with my Drupal package, which came from, from somewhere else. It has uh, plug-in interfaces to do our post customizations, and it's using CFS, our advanced file system, with some checkpointing features uh, to restart things if things are going wrong. The thing is a kind of slow, it takes easily three or four hours to build your own uh, distribution, and therefore you were happy if you were able to roll back if something went wrong or in the scripts you had. In the simplest case, it's fairly straightforward, but you can do as well advanced things like uh, patching around with CRUB with your own or boot archive. You can you already get support for localizations, and um, you're really getting at the end an installable package uh, with the distro constructor. So here are some the, the few steps you have to do. First thing is you want to uh, beef up your current OpenSolaris installation with a package which is called SunW Distro Const, which downloads uh, through IPS, and then you're basically ready to go. You need an x86 system, should have a 786 MB main memory, and you better have some 8 gigabyte of free space, and actually you better have some 10, 12, 15, because it'll build up the entire file structure, and this takes quite some um, disk space. Uh, your best friend is going to become VirtualBox, because or it, it'll allow you to test your results without having too many PCs, and VirtualBox works like a piece together with uh, the ISO images you are going to create and with OpenSolaris. The information you need to do the job are basically here in this TOI, and uh, I'm going to talk you th uh, through the key steps to build your own custom solution. The first thing is if you want to add your own software and not just to recompose things you're getting from standard repositories, you have to run your own IPS server where you check in your own software, what we basically did with Trooper. Uh, this is not a static thing, this is a dynamic daemon, and you will just have to start your own IPS server on your box, run it on the port you want to and in a home directory you want it to run, and then you have to build your own IPS package if you want to do a custom add-on to the staffer. Uh, these things are fairly well described in the blog above here, 
and it's basically about uploading all the files are uh, and the directory structure you want your own package to be on. Uh, there are some tools out there, some enhancements which you can get from here. The next thing is you have to set up your build environment. Um, this is a kind of interesting because actually it's just file copying, but uh, you have to be super user, which was a surprise to me, and you'll simply create your working directory as a CFS file system, and as I told you, you better have some 8, 10, 12 gigabyte uh, for the entire thing. Then the simplest way is you're going to use the uh, standard manifest file for the slim CD, copy it to a place uh, you want it to have, and start patching the things and customize your own distribution or as much as you want and as, and, and as far as you can bear it. What you then want to do is you customize your control file with standard things. You can change your own distro name, give it your own name. You can change your uh, default authorities, which means the place where you're pulling the packages from. You can add extra pa you, packages which you draw from the authority or you can add uh, different repositories from different places because you may want to run your own public uh, download server. And you can choose to uh, remove some packages from the live CD uh, to the final installation because the live CD, which is an installed CD, needs extra software to install the target system. This stuff isn't anymore needed. And uh, there's advanced stuff, as I told you, uh, you can uh, create all different kinds of file uh, system structures on your live CD. You can tinker around with CRUB and post-boot uh, root modifications. Uh, once you configured your XML file, it's just about uh, calling the distro constructor with the build option and a path to your uh, file. And then you have to wait a while because it'll download all the packages you need, and I think this is around 2,500 packages for, for a standard installation, and it may easily take some three or four hours, and uh, you want to have a, a good network connection to your uh, IPS repository server. If everything goes well, it's going to build uh, all the file systems you need, and you end up with an ISO image, which you can use as a bootable live CD, or with a USB stick like I created here, uh, where you can boot your system from USB stick. Uh, USB stick comes extremely handy for me because we have a lab where we put in dirt cheap servers and no one put in any more DVD drives and uh, booting the systems from a USB stick is really handy. Uh, the USB stick is being generated with another kind of small tool. It's called USB copy. This is a typo from OpenOffice. It capitalizes it. It should be read USB copy in lower cases. And uh, it finds your USB sticks being plugged in. And this is all you need. And uh, the real work to do your own custom installation for, uh, let's say, with in including an extra AMP stack is uh, not more than 10 to 15 minutes uh, typing work and are a kind of four to five hours wall clock time till everything are, is being composed. Uh, once you build your media on your USB stick or on a CD, uh, you can use the stuff and you have all packages already on your CD. So you can install a target system like a Drupal content management system without any extra downloads from the internet. Uh, the live CD is a kind of special since it has some uh, uh, loopback mounted file systems which are read only. You won't be able to do everything with the live CD, but you're able to install the entire target stack uh, on any uh, target system. You're getting all the install software for free. Just click on the install icon and you'll use the custom technologies from OpenSolaris to create your target system, including localizations, including all the users and all the dialogues you're getting from standard uh, installation. So this is basically uh, all it takes to build your own uh, private custom uh, uh, distribution which is actually fully supportable. Uh, you can give it to any customer uh, who is running commercial data centers. You can get support contracts for them. It's redistributable. You can give it to anyone. People can use it for free. No applications. And on the positive side, uh, the full support uh, you can get for carrier-grade data center operating system uh, like Solaris. In the next three months, you're going to see that uh, the guys in the project are currently working on bug fixes. They're doing some uh, usability improvements, 
but uh, there are no big changes there, and they are currently working to support more processor architectures. Uh, we would like to get lots of feedback on how people uh, build their stuff with uh, the current technologies, and therefore we're really eager to get field feedback. And I would encourage you to grab a CD over there or here, including the small booklet, with, uh, which, was, which helps you to get started in Open Solaris and build your own custom distribution. Uh, I'm already coming to the end. I'm with a department called ISV Engineering, which has as well a huge open source team. And uh, we are working c uh, currently on building all kinds of custom distributions like my uh, co-worker Jignes Shah is uh, uh, worked on a Postgres distribution which is just 200 megabyte as a total image without any graphics in and he really has an extremely tiny and fast uh, and very intelligent uh, Postgres distribution arm. Um, um, you may want to work with it as well. As I told you, anyone can use it. It's free, it's redistributable, and if you're doing stuff where someone wants to go productive with, you can get our support from our Sun for this technology, except your own packages, because as long as you draw packages from the standard repositories, it's basically just a standard our Open Solaris technology. So, uh, oops, I want to go back one slide. So, this basically brings me to the end. Uh, thank you for listening. And um, as you probably already realized, uh, just be aware that Sun is really turning more and more into an open source a company and not just a hardware vendor from California. And we have actually a significant number of open source engineers all over Europe, mainly in Hamburg, the open office guys. Uh, the MySQL guys uh, sitting around the Baltic Sea, the NetBeam guys in Prague. Do we have Roman Strobel here? Nope, he seems on the run. Uh, the Virtual Box guys being close to me in Stuttgart, and the Crit Engine guys uh, in Regensburg. This makes in total some, I think, some 200, 300 engineers who are working on our open source projects, plus other people like Amanda Wade, who is working on Lidy and who wrote just an excellent white paper about our scaling amp stacks. Get it from our booth, from MySQL. Amanda is willing to sign it. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is basically it. We have some three minutes. Are there any questions? This is something we're working on, and uh, I hope that we're going to ship some results in May, hope, hopefully in November. Uh, this is definitely something where usability ha ha has been suffering a little bit. And we're really now investing in, in going into more data center direction rather than in, in the pure laptop developer direction from the beginning on. Okay, someone else? So, thank you for the time. And if you want to play around with it, uh, the CDs are down here. Thank you very much. <clears throat>